Hello and uh, welcome back. Uh, today I found something at my doorstep. Well, of course it's not like that, but I, I found something, guys. Look at this. It is cool. It is huge. It's a spectrum analyzer. It is a, a tech scan and it's the AL60. And it goes from, well, zero, probably not, but I need to see the lowest value, but let's say three until three gigahertz and it is in three bands it's from zero to one from one to two and from two to three gigahertz and it looks a little bit like a like a radio tuner i i, I will zoom in it it came with documentation luckily because on the internet i couldn't find any and it is like controlling a plane you have an old checklist what to do and uh, i'm planning that to do <laughs> on camera so uh, let's see if we can get some uh, signal on the screen okay let's do it i've got the whole list here so i'm just gonna uh, see what we need to do and uh, let's see if it works and uh, well they just say connect the power oh yeah indeed we can see a little bit the display, I think. Set the band to first. Yes, because this is okay. That's how it works. Cool. Okay, first band. RFDB to 50. Okay, we have a line, that's good. Set the time control, two milliseconds. Uh, where is my time control here? The resolution to auto. And now we can really start to see already things. And if you turn, I see here a peak that, that is Oh, around zero. So maybe, I don't know what it is, but we put it back to 500. Okay. Well, I'm putting now a signal 300 megahertz from the Marconi. And that is indeed uh, visible, but it is moving a lot. Okay, I'm trying now to have a, a better look, but as you see, it is moving all the time. And now it's switched off uh, on uh, for uh, at least half an hour. And it's moving, it's moving, it's moving. And my Marconi is not moving, <laughs> I know that for sure. Um, but here you can see we are around the 300 megahertz, so it's yeah, more or less correct. And uh, we are now on one megahertz, but you can also put on 10 or 100. Then it's easier to find where well, you have just the start marker from zero. But here we have the, but let's go to one megahertz. And then you can really see the oscillator is not that stable. It moves all around. But here we are 300, so what if we, Go to 400 megahertz. Then we need to try to find it. Probably also a little bit above 400. Let's put it first to 100 megahertz. Then it's easier to find. So it's around here. We go again to one. No. Here it is. And you see, I put 400. And it's already at 460. So go to 500 megahertz. And we go to 10 megahertz. And then we try to find it. Oh, here it is. Hmm. 
Okay, let's it. Then it's not moving too much. But now we are on 500 megahertz and the scale already says 700. So there something is wrong. Uh, so we probably need to adjust something because now I wonder if we can even make it to 600. So 600 megahertz. And then I'm already at 10, so I should be able to find it. Yeah, here it is. But we are already here at 900. So I wonder if we can, what is the, the highest that we can do? So uh, let's go to 650. Yes, and then I'm in the top. Okay. Let's see. Well, as you can see, now it's on my uh, bench. And it is huge. It is really, really big. So, uh, but I will try to take the covers off. And then uh, we have a look inside. Look at this, <laughs> talking about old technology, but uh, it, I think it's easier to see how it kind of works because then you see, okay, this is probably the oscillator and uh, it goes in here and this is a box with three inputs or three connections, the oscillator is here, so then it's probably mixed here and in the bottom here comes the cable from the front through the attenuator. So then the mix signal goes in here, goes there, and that goes to the attenuator of the IF section. So. Now I wonder what the bottom looks like, but first I'll go a little bit to the top. Here is all the high voltage stuff for the tube. Now I've put it on its side and here you see a lot of connections again and you always you have these little things in between and it seems like attenuations. So they probably adjust this thing by changing the attenuators because they all have a value on it, 6 to 6.3 or 3. So. Ooh, the, the bottom just looks spectacular. Look at this. A little power supply section here. It says something, says marker. And again, they put this little attenuator in between. Here you see also everything is with these little cables. And uh, yeah, double balanced mixer. Another mixer there. Here's another tube. Maybe that's impedance, I don't know. And uh, well, this is a real old technique, but uh, it uh, looks cool. Well, it looks here that uh, this one already has been replaced. And if you can see, maybe if I can zoom in. Yeah. One of the rectifiers have been blown and they just created it with four. Uh, with four little diets. So it has, it, there has been some work in, in, in this thing. Yeah, it looks very spectacular. Here is the attenuation of the IF. Here is the attenuation for the input. Here is the end connector. It goes in, goes out, goes through. Another mixer, here is another relay, they switch a lot. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah, it, it probably, if you want to have it perfect, probably is a lot of work. So I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure about it. So uh, probably gonna clean it up and uh, try try to sell it. If someone wants to put, uh, put the work in it. And, uh, and because it actually could be very nice. Up to three gigahertz, that is a lot. And I think it's it's from around the 70s, if I should make a guess. So, uh, yeah, 
only 50 years old. And it doesn't have, uh, and it only has one tube, and that's the big one. <laughs> so uh, it does have transistors already, semiconductors instead of the the tubes. So it uh, should be possible. Hey, thank you for watching, <laughs> and I hope to see you next time.